Hey everyone, my name is Michael Stipe, and today I want to have a look at Data Loader, what they are, why you should use them, and where to put them. Before we get started, if you want to have the source code of this episode or any future episode, head over to tv.chillycream.com. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, let's dive in. I already have running here a GraphQL server in the background. And we're gonna quickly open here a tab in Nitro, and then we're gonna have a look at our schema. So this GraphQL server is built for a web shop, so we have brands and products. I can dive in here into the brands field, and from brands can reach also products, and then go back to brands, which makes no sense in this call pass, but it makes sense when I go from products to brand, right? So what we're gonna do is write a simple GraphQL query to fetch the brands by name. And then we're gonna look at what happens in our backend. So I'm going to the operation tab, and then we're gonna simply do a brands and then name. And then we run that. And then we go to our backend here and you can see it prints out the SQL that actually happens underneath. So in this instance, it looks all good. We have here select, ID and name, and we get that from the brands table and we order it by name. All good, right? So let's clear that and go back to our GraphQL query. So we already saw that I can go here from brands to products. And what I want to do for my front end is now fetch all the brands by name. And then I want to fetch all the products for each brand. And I also want just the name here. And we're going to run that. And then we go back to our backend. And boom, there is so much SQL suddenly happening. And from just the GraphQL request, you wouldn't have guessed that. So what is actually happening here? Let's have a look at what SQLs we are outputting here. So the first one is we're gonna select the brands and order it by name. So that is what we actually saw before. And then we are selecting here the products for a brand. And then we are selecting the products for a brand and again and again and again. So let's have a look at the code. So in my catalog API, I have here the types folder. That's where all my GraphQL stuff is in. And I can go here to the brand queries and this is the get brands resolver. That is basically what gets invoked when we call this brands field in GraphQL. So when we go back here, you can see this is invoked and it basically just invokes our brand service. And if we go to get brands in our brand service, we can see that we are using here EF core. So we basically have here this catalog context and we do a simple two array async on this data set. So this data is returned to GraphQL and then GraphQL iterates over it and invokes for each of that the products, the get products resolver on the brand type, right? And then we take that brand, take from this brand the ID and ask the product service to get the products by brand for a specific brand, right? And that in essence also goes back to EF Core and fetches here the products for this specific brand also ordered by name and returns it as an array. So very basic. So the explosion, the SQL explosion that we have there is caused by our business layer not knowing about the GraphQL execution context. But this is actually how we want to build our application with clear boundaries to our layers. This keeps our code simple and easy to understand. Meta already for the REST API embraces a tool for optimized data fetching called a data loader. The business layer would use a data loader to fetch data from the underlying data source. The data loader is a part of your data layer or at least sits in front of it. The idea is to have a unified API to fetch data by key that transparently batches these requests into a single call to the data source. So how does this work? The data loader has something called a promise cache. The promise cache holds promises to get some data in the future. A promise in .NET is called a task. When you await a task, you in essence wait for a promise to be fulfilled. When the business layer requests an entity by key and the promise cache within the data loader does not yet have a promise for this key, it will simply issue a new promise for this key to resolve this entity in the future. This promise is stored in the promise cache and returned to the caller. 
which can simply await this promise like any other task in .NET. If a second caller asks for a key for which we already have a promise in our promise cache, we simply return the promise and the caller can just await it. When there's nothing else to do anymore and we've requested everything that we needed, the data loader will simply dispatch. In essence, it will invoke a batch fetch method which will resolve all the requested keys. The data loader will ensure that our interaction with our business layer will not end up in an N plus one problem. At the same time, there's no complexity increase for our API layer as the business layer surface will not change. Let's actually have a look at the code, how we can refactor it to use data loader. Back here in our service layer, we have the get products by brand method. And this is actually where we want to introduce our data loader. So I sent that in hot chocolate, you just have to define the batch fetching method to write a data loader. And that's actually what we're going to do. So we're going to introduce here an internal static class and we call that the product data loader. In this class, we can add as many batch fetching methods that we want to have. If you're building with GraphQL, you need the right support to stay ahead. The Chili Cream support plans give you direct access to our experts, priority bug fixes, and even a say in our roadmap. So you can shape the future of the tool you are relying on. Check out the options to find the right fit for your team. And with that, let's go back to the problem at hand. And uh, it could be that from this single class, we generate two, three, or five data loader. In this case, we just write one. And this data loader is called like this method here. So we take this method over, and we create here a public static async method that returns a dictionary. We use a dictionary here to have a key to value resolved mapping in essence. So we have here an int for the brand ID, and then we have a products array here as the value that we want to have. So for each brand ID, we want to have a products array. We name the method uh, the same as in the business layer, we could be more accurate and say brand ID instead of brand, but uh, that's it. And then we add here a read only list of ints, which are our keys, so the brand IDs. Next, we need a catalog context. Very similar to our resolvers in Hot Chocolate, we do here a method injection. So we inject here the catalog context, and then we have the cancellation token, so we can abort this request. So we can copy from the method that we already have in our business layer, this part. The where clause we have to rewrite, because now we have many brand IDs, so we do a brand IDs.contains, then we map the entity model to the model that we use in our business layer. And next we group this thing by the brand ID because we fetch all the products for the brands that we have in this list. And then we group the products by the brand. So from this, we could actually already build our map, right? But we have up here this order by. So we want each group of products ordered by name. The problem is if we put an order by in front of the group, then this would be erased. So we have to have it afterwards. To do that, we're gonna do here another select. And we built a new anonymous type. And in that we map the key, so we preserve our group. And we build a property called items here, which has the items of that group. And then we're gonna simply copy the order in here. And that means the order by is actually translated properly to SQL. Last but not least, we're gonna build the dictionary here. And we use this to dictionary async, which is a helper method from EFCore. We map the key as key and the value is items. We pass on the cancellation token so that this can be canceled and then we can move this data loader class out of our service class here. So I move it into a separate file and in this file there's still something missing for the source generator to pick this method up and that is the data loader attribute. You can put that on top and then the data loader is already generated so we can jump back here to our product service, go up here and then we're going to inject here the i product by brand id data loader. And this is actually, let me go over to our batch fetch method, inferred from the method name. You can see here, we basically take this part. If you don't want that, you can also override that and just pass here the name that you wanna have instead of us inferring that from the method name. Okay, let's go back to the service and then use it. So this is the product by ID 
data loader. And we're going to use that now here. Down there in the product by brand async method, we're going to replace the call to the catalog context and just insert here the products by brand. It has two methods, load async and load required. So if you're sure that the database will always return something or that is a contract, then use load required, it will blow up if the database doesn't return uh, the data. So no null is allowed. In our case, it could easily be null, right? There could be no entries for that group. So we would receive null for the array. So in our case, we just fetch that. And if there is nothing, we're going to take an empty array that we return here. Let's await that. And then we are good to go. So with this change done, let's clear our console and simply run that again. Why this is compiling? So this change is really simple, right? This is the same business layer that we are using now from our GraphQL side. So if I go here to brand node, then you can see there's no change. The business layer is really, or the service uh, class is the same, the same method that I invoke here. But within this service class, we are now calling our data loader, which has this batch fetching method. Okay, our server is running. I'm clearing out the console. Let's go back to Nitro here and then run this query again. And then we go back to our console and we can see that we have a lot less SQL here. We basically just fetch the brands by uh, ordered by name. And then we have a slightly more complex SQL because we have this group by in here that fetches all the products by brand. So this is now two SQLs. This is really nice from the performance aspect, but also really nice from our layering, right? We don't have any impact to our GraphQL layer, which is the same. Our business layer surface is the same. And just within the business layer, we are using now a data loader that is not visible to anyone. So what do you think about data loader? I know the first question probably is, how do I paging with it? How do I projection with it? How can I do filtering with it? And we're gonna look at that in the next episode. So chime out in the comments, what do you think about Data Loader? And I hope to see you next time.